Hey, welcome to Woodworking with Wes, a.k.a. Santa's Little Workshop. We're building some Christmas presents, a tray, a serving tray out of black walnut, and we're going to show you how I went through all of the steps and how the angles that we need to do and the sizes. We're going to show you step by step how to build a serving tray just like this. These are the pieces. We have one cut out here. This is the ends. These are the sides. This is the bottom. But we start off with a piece of rough lumber and we're going to go mill this to thickness. Our bottom is 5 eighths of an inch thick. Our sides are 5 eighths and our ends are 13 sixteenths. And so we're going to go mill our lumber, get it all cut to thicknesses first, do that, and then we'll come back and we'll start sizing things and we'll show you the size and the angles that we need to come up with to make our pieces. So let's go to the planer, start milling our wood. Okay, we have completed our milling part. Now I want to clarify a little bit. I have a big shop. I have nice machinery that allows me to plane and sand a wide belt sander. If you have just a little garage shop and you don't have some of these pieces of equipment, don't be discouraged. This is still something you could do with just a 12 inch bench top planer and a nice little table saw. You could still make this. A little more handwork involved. Don't be discouraged. Just watch us as we go through. Understand that there might be a little more work. I have the opportunity to have some machinery and so I use it, but don't be discouraged if you don't. Let's go ahead. I've milled my end pieces to thickness. These are my side pieces to thickness. This, like I say, this is 5 eighths. Here's the bottom piece we're going to be using, 5 eighths end piece. The first thing we're going to do, we have a pattern of an end piece and we're going to drill our holes first, cut our angles and then um, I have a jig that I'll make, I've made that will show us how to do some of the angles and we're going to get, we'll get the handle first and the angles first, but let's go there first. The first thing I did to do the handle was to mark the center of my board. We're going to go over to the drill press and I'm going to show you how I have set up my drill press with a Forstner bit to make this handle. And it's not hard to do at all, so let's go over and I'll show you how to make this handle with just a Forstner bit on a drill press. We're getting ready to drill our handle. We've put a mark, a center mark, on our board. You can see right there, if I get my fat finger out of the way, there. And I've made some marks on my support stick on my jig. We're going to line up with this line and then with this line we're going to drill the two outside holes and then we're going to fill in cutting of the rest of the handle out. So let's just watch as I go through and drill the handle. Now, you can see that I've drilled my four holes, but I've got these points sticking up. And I'm just going to go through with my drill press and just move along and nibble off those points and straighten it up the best I can while on the drill press. 
and then we're going to take it over to the bench and finish it off. There we are. There's the start of our hole. Let's go back to the bench and get working on the bench. We finished cleaning our handle hole with just a file to take off the little rough edges. Just like that. Now we're going to be running a router around here to clean up the edges. All we're trying to do is give our router bit a smooth place to, to ride so we can finish sanding it later on. That's all we need to do right now. Now let's go to the chop saw and cut our angles. Okay, we're getting ready to cut the angles. This is our pattern. We're getting ready to cut this angle on the end of our new board. Our sides are uh, beveled out 15 degrees. When I went to put my corner together, I found out that if I put a 15 degree bevel here and a 15 degree uh, cut there, it doesn't fit together in the corner. The, in fact, if you turn it around this way, you'll see there's a gap right there. We had to compensate for that gap, and so I made this jig. These are cut 15 degrees. I stacked two of them on top of each other to hold them in place. I cut this the size of my side and nailed it on. This is also a 15 degree cut. And when I went to put my end piece in here, let's see, this goes this way like this, I had to cut this different than a 15 degree cut. And so I don't know if there's a mathematical formula that tells you what to do, but what I did was I just chopped to fit on my table saw, or on my chop saw, and I found out that this had to be not a 15 degree cut, it had to be a 14 degree cut, and it had to not be square 90 degrees, it actually had to be beveled 4 degrees. It took me a little bit of time to find that angle, but I went and, and just kept cutting and chopping until I got it to fit right, and then I built me a jig for my chop saw to give me those angles. And let's go to our chop saw now, and I'll show you the jig I built and how it works. Okay, here's the jig that I built for my chop saw. Just a couple of pieces of wood with a backer piece. And you can see that I have set my chop saw at 14 degrees. And I have beveled it at 4 degrees. What I've done on my jig is I've made a mark. See, there's my indications right there so that I remember 4 degree angle, 14 degree cut. I put my center line, let me back up here so you can see it better, put my center line right there. That gives me my one cut on my one side, and then I flip my board around and put it against the stop that I've predetermined over here, and that gives me my cut on my other side. So let's cut these. The cut I just made on the table saw is the 15 degree bevel on the bottom side of our end. You can see how that, when we set that flat on the table saw, how that gives a 15 degree bevel. So now we have our ends beveled correctly, we have our bottom beveled correctly, we have our hole cut, and now we're getting ready to do our little bandsaw cut on the end, and then we'll route. So that's the next thing. We'll go, we have a pattern, we're going to go trace our pattern and then we'll go to the bandsaw and cut. This is our pattern piece. You can see where I've traced some already with my black pencil. What I do is lay my pattern on here. Now, first off, how do I get a pattern? Well, I just cut and sanded until I had a look that I liked. 
And it wasn't really a hard thing to do. I just wanted a nice, smooth, uh, arched edge on there or, or, or a coved edge on there like that. And I just did it. And then I, I reversed my pattern that I did so that I had it on both sides. But your, the pattern is, is kind of freehand. I guess that's the best way to explain it. Now, when you put your pattern on your piece, go face to face. So I have my bevels facing the same way. And I just put my bevels up there and hold them so that they're flush. And you can see my holes line up. And then I just take my pencil and I trace my pattern. And there we are with our pattern traced on. This is our face side that goes to the inside of our tray. We're going to go over to the bandsaw, cut this now and sand. Okay, on our edge sander, we sanded our bandsaw cuts and we just sanded to the line that we had made off of our pattern. Now we'll go back and we'll route this edge and the inside of our handle on both sides and our ends will almost be done. Now that we have our end piece cut, beveled, sanded, or I mean uh, routed, now there's quite a bit of sanding. We have to sand all of this ready to go because it has to be finished sanded pretty close and before it even goes together. In fact, it has to be almost all done sanding it before we nail it together. So there's a little bit of work left to go on this, but this is how the end is done. So now we have our end. I just completed the sanding portion of our little end, but I wanted to come back to my jig on my chop saw. I really needed to clarify what I did here, and I forgot to mention to you the marks that I had and, and why I did. Um, if you'll notice, this is another blank that, that, that I have cut. There's a center line that goes clear through. The center line gives me how wide I want to have my tray, and if I lay my my piece that I've cut up here, you can see that my line lines up with my cut. And so that is what I did to do. I guess actually it goes this way. I had it backwards. But this set there, and this gives me the, the distance. And your distance can be as wide as you want, but you just have to um, decide where you want to cut. And then when you have your center line out here, mark it wherever you want to. And then you just turn it over here and put it back over on your stop and then your cut and that gives you an equal distance from your center line and centers your handle but I just wanted to clarify how I found this mark and this stop and why I did it the way I did I did it to center my handle now we're getting ready to cut the sides of our tray um, here's a side that we've already cut in advance. These are our two new sides that we're going to be cutting. We've put a 15 degree bevel on the box, bottom of it, and now we're going to be cutting the ends at 15 degrees. And so we've set our chop saw at 15 degrees. Uh, better check. There, we're at 15. And 
I've just set a stop block on here to give me the measurement that I want. The measurement that I made is 21 and 3 eighths of an inch. That is from long point to long point. 21 and 3 eighths. That's how long my tray will be. But you can make your tray any length that you want to. I lay it up here. I make That cut bevels it, then flip it over. Whoops, let's see, how did I do that? Oh, flip it this way, excuse me. <laughs> I have to remember what I'm doing here. Not a problem. Anyway, flip it over that way. And now my ends are beveled in at 15 degrees on both sides. And that's all we do to make our end, our side pieces. Now we sand those because everything has to be sanded before final assembly. So we've got those now, we can sand those, and then we'll be ready to our first stage of assembly. There's our side pieces. They're easy in comparison to the ends. But we'll go ahead and put the sides and the ends together, and I'll show you how I measure for the bottom. Okay, the one thing we have to remember when we're nailing is that the long side of our bottom bevel goes to the inside of our tray. So as we nail together, we just put it like this, and we're just going to butt joint and nail, and we're going to do all four corners. No glue, just nails. And uh, we'll get started there. So first thing we do is just hold that good and tight. And oop, nail. I always check and make sure we got it right where we want to. Okay. All right, and we'll do that all the way around, all four corners, so that we end up with our tray. Looking like that. As soon as we get to that point, I'll show you how we measure for our bottom. Okay, we're getting ready to cut our bottom. You can see that we have the sides of our tray together, and you can see how that looks like our original design. One of the things I want to point out is if you look from the bottom side, you'll notice that the bottom is recessed a little bit. That's so that when it sits on a table or anything, it only sits on this edge, not on that. I just wanted to point that out because you have to take that into account when you measure for your bottom. And this is how we measure for the bottom. I cut some scrap pieces of wood. This is two and a half inches. I put a two and a half inch piece here. I put a two and a half inch piece here. And I take this measurement right here in between, which is eight and three quarters, and add five inches. There's my 13 and three quarters. And you can see I've already done this once. I've made my notations there. And you do the same thing when you measure the length. You take your two pieces, you put them there, 13 and three quarters, plus your five actually, and there's 18 and three quarters. The reason that I did this was because it's just too hard to sit there and measure and get an exact measure on a bevel. So if you do it this way, you can get the exact measurement. Now, we talked about the recess. How I accomplished that recess is I took my 13 and 3 quarters by 18 and 3 quarters and added 1 eighth of an inch to my measurement and that brought the level of my floor up because it wouldn't go all the way down to where these blocks sat right on the table and then elevated it just enough to give me a recess. So my bottom will be 13 and 7 eighths by 18 and 7 eighths for the bottom of my tray. And it's the same thing. Like I say, if you want to make this tray whatever size you want to make this tray, this is the way you measure to get your bottom. Once you get your frame put together, your sides put together, measure for your bottom. Using these little blocks just makes your measurement easier. Okay, we took our bottom over to our table saw. You can see that 
we are beveled 15 in, in, or 15 degrees all the way around. We've cut it our 18 and 7 eighths by 13 and 7 eighths. It's ready to go into our tray. But again, everything's got to be sanded before it goes together because you can't sand this bottom inside just like you can't sand the other pieces. So you sand before you assemble. Now, on walnut, we always sand all the way to 180 grit. And we, the reason we sand to 180 grit, 100 grit, 120, 150, 180. This is a not a complicated sand, but a, a labor-intensive sand because in order to get the grain to really pop out and your uh, figure on your walnut, your walnut really has to be sanded to 180 to really bring out the beauty of the walnut. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to sand our bottom and then we're ready for final assembly. Okay, there we are, sanded to 180. Now you'll notice that because we used rustic walnut, we had some knots and some gaps, and I wanted to make sure that those were all filled, and so I filled and sanded all of my pieces so that I have a nice, smooth, clean, solid surface to take to the paint shop. We're going to nail the bottom in now, head to the paint shop. We're going to nail it in by just putting three nails on each end and one nail on the side. No glue. We want to allow for expansion and contraction. Um, there'll be a little bit, shouldn't be much, but we just want to nail it in. No glue again. And then we're just going to touch the edges, clean them up, and we're ready for the paint shop. So nail first, sand next. Okay, we'll fill those holes and be ready to sand so that when we're all done sanding, there won't be any nail holes. If you noticed when I was nailing, I had a nail come through. Every once in a while we practice our mistakes. What we're going to do is we're going to grab onto that nail with our, our nippers. We're just going to bend it back and forth until it breaks off like that. One of the nice things about working with a rustic material, rust, rustic walnut or anything like that, is the pairs are easy because they just become another item like this or this. We're going to put that putty in there. We're going to let it dry. We're going to sand it and it will just become another distress in the bottom of it and it will not be uh, an inconvenience to do that and it will be just fine, look great and it will hide really well. Okay, we're all sanded, fixed the little repair, we're off to the paint shop. We're going to give this two coats of clear pre-cat lacquer and we're done. It's ready to go. Well, the final coat of lacquer is on. This Christmas present is ready to go. It's been a great day in Santa's little workshop. 
This is a great project and one I know that you could build yourself, just follow how we did it. Very easy to do and, and will test your skills if you're a beginner and, and would show off your skills if you're a little more advanced. Always fun things to do and woodworking with Wes. By the way, if you subscribe, you'll be one of the first to see our next project.